Hello, welcome to NPTEL NOC, an introductory course on point set topology part 2. Today we shall start a new topic, module 45, partially ordered sets. Let us recall some basic theory of partial orders. Some of them must be already familiar to you, so we will be somewhat quick here. By a partial ordering, which is usually written as less than or equal to, on a given set X, we mean a binary relation which is reflexive, transitive and anti-symmetric. Unlike in the case of equivalence relation, which is reflexive, transitive, and symmetric. So, that is the big difference here anti symmetry. Anti symmetry just means that if x is less than or equal to y and y is less than or equal to x, then x must be equal to y. A set with a fixed partial order is called a poset. Partial order it has been you know, short run, po set. Strictly speaking, it is the ordered pair x comma less than or equal to. But as usual, you know, like topology, matrix space, let x be a matrix space, let x be a topology, that is what we are seeing, right. Similarly, you will say let x be a partial order, x be a partially ordered set, let x be a poset. But then immediately we will mention what is the uh, the partial order there whenever we are dealing with it, that is it. Okay. We also use the symbol x less than y, do not put that equality part here. If x is less than equal to y in this sense, but x is not equal to y, okay, less than equal to y will include x equal to y case also, because if x is less than equal to y, y is less than equal to x, then x is equal to y that is what we have seen and reflexive means just means that x is always less than equal to x so that is already there. Given a subset A of a partially ordered set this element x is called an upper bound for A if A is less than equal to x for all A inside A. So, you may say that x is the biggest amongst all elements of A, but x itself may not be an element of A, see. So, that is called upper bound. There are many upper bounds, right. There may not be any upper bound either. So, it is just a definition, no existence or uniqueness. It is called least upper bound if x is less than to y for all upper bounds of A, okay. For all upper bounds y, x must be less than equal to y. So, then it is called least upper bound. Note that least upper bound if it exists is unique by anti symmetry because if x and y are both least upper bound x is less than equal to y, y will be less than equal to x right. So, that is anti symmetry is used here then least upper bound will be unique. So, then we will call it supremum of A we shall denote it by sub A. Similarly, the terms lower bound, greatest lower bound, infimum, etc. are defined. Okay. So, all these things we are using and we are used to the study of real numbers, the same definition, same, same thing. Only thing is in real numbers, there will be addition, subtraction, multiplication, nothing will be used here they are just arbitrary sets. How far you can do, what analysis you can do, what topology you can do, with just the uh, order that, that is the, the topic here today, okay. A poset is called a linear order or a total order, both the terms are used. If Given any two elements x and y inside a, we must have x is less than equal to y or y is less than equal to x, or of course x equal to y is also allowed. 
Okay, so you can say this law of trichotomy. Of course, by anti symmetry, if both x is equal to y and y less than equal to x, then we have x equal to y. All right. An element x inside x is called maximal if x is equal to y, y inside x implies x equal to y. Okay. So, such a take any partial order set, maybe we take a partial order set and take a subset of that with the induced partial order, restricted partial order, then you can talk about maximal element inside that. So, this is just like similar to you know supremums and so on, maximal element here by the way in an arbitrary partial order need not be unique. Okay. A linear order or a total order if uh, if that is there then there is a different thing so you have just maximal elements also you have defined okay a maximal element means what if anything is bigger than that it must be equal to that i mean different things i am defining the, these this definition this def total order may not have anything to do with each other a poset x is called well ordered if every non empty subset A in it is bounded below, suppose you take any non empty subset which is bounded below, that is not the case. Every non empty subset must be bounded below. Infimum of A exists and that infimum must be inside A. Okay? So, this is well ordered. So, this is a very strong condition. Simple example of well order is a natural number with the standard order. Okay. Given any subset of natural number, there is one which is the smallest, right? So, that property has been axiomatized here. Okay. So, natural numbers are also totally ordered, right? But well ordering what is well order automatically it will be totally ordered why take any two elements x and y okay that is a subset that subset must have a infimum that infimum must be inside that that means infimum is one of the elements x or y if it is x then x will be less than equal to y if it is y y will be less than equal to x so one of the order has to be there so automatically a well order is a total order. A total order may not be well order, just you can take the example of all the integers. Okay. That set may not have, you know, a subset may not have an infimum, which we know. All right. A subset A of a totally ordered set X is called an initial segment. So, just uh, pay attention to this. An initial segment inside x. If you have an x inside x such that the set A is all elements which are less than x are inside A, or all elements which are less than or equal to x are inside. A. So, see, this may not include x but it is possible that this A includes X also. So, there are the two different cases. So, both of them are called initial segments. Quite often, this A is called an open initial segment and this part will be called a closed initial segment. Just like the closed ray minus infinity to 0, 0 closed or here the closed ray minus infinity to 0, 0 open. So, th these are the standard examples. Okay. Following result is one of the most useful result from set theory and it is equivalent to axiom's choice. We take it for granted. What is the John's lemma? So, John's lemma states the following. Take any partially ordered set, non-empty. Suppose every linearly ordered 
subset x has an upper bound then x has a maximal element every linearly ordered subset every totally ordered subset of x means what under the same in the same order you have take the subset order we have take the restricted order then take a subset take the restricted order that must be linearly ordered if such uh, linear order have an upper bound then x has a maximal element there may be many maximal elements this is just a poset if it is total order there will be only one maximal element okay x is one only a poset okay note that the lemma does not assert any uniqueness about such maximal elements very important using john's lemma we can easily prove zermelo's another very important theorem or in the case it's also an axiom every set x can be well ordered we have just seen the the set of uh, integers is not well ordered right with the usual order it is not so what this chermelo says is there is another order in which it will be a lord right some existence of some order some partial order which will be total order which will be well ordered that is the meaning of this one to prove this one you can do it independently but you will have to use axiom of choice that has to be there okay there is no other independent proof as such because this statement chance lemma both of them are equivalent to axiom of choice so we are assuming this one it just means that we are assuming axiom of choice in the background but now what we will do we will prove this one we will use this one to prove this one so that way the our task will be simpler okay how do you do that in order to employ john's lemma you have to have some you know some family of ordered sets and so on then you say something is a maximal and that maximal satisfy whatever you want it so i start with a family lambda of all ordered pairs a comma some partial order where a is a subset of x look at the family px the set of subsets of x of course you don't need a empty set empty set you are throw away okay and put a well ordered on that take that one if a well order is different that will be different element okay so it's a ordered pair of such things a is a subset and this less than equal to is a well order on that why this lambda is non empty why is lambda is non empty because singleton sets can be given only one partial order and that partial order is automatically well ordered and they are elements of lambda therefore lambda is is non empty you start with x non empty it can be non empty okay so here i am assuming x non empty i don't worry about no empty sets here all right now on lambda we will put a partial order what is that partial order a1 less than or equal to 1 a2 less than or equal to it are related by this i will read it as prick or i will we can read it as precedes a1 precedes a2 if and only if one condition a1 may be equal to a2 along with okay along with what the partial orders are also same okay that is done or a1 is an initial segment of a2 
the way we have defined the initial segment. Okay, so that is the condition. So I am expressing that in the second part. Once a1 is equal to a2, then what you should have the order a1 and order a2 are the same when taken on a1. We take the a2 order, restrict it to a1. It must be a1 order. Which is same thing as saying x y belong to a1, x y less than or equal to one. If and only if x is less than or equal to y with the relation two. Yeah. Okay. Then lambda this one is a poset. What are the things that you have to verify? What are the members? Members are look like this one. They are less than or equal to themselves because once they are equal, this that is that is okay. So reflexivity is there. Okay, transitivity is also obvious because if a one equal to a two, a two equal to a three, then it's fine. But if this is an initial segment here and a two is an initial segment in a three, then the same point will give you a one is also initial segment in a three. Okay, reflexivity is easy. Details are left to you as an exercise. Do that one. Otherwise, all these definitions may become bit uh, in the you know go in the air. So you have to spend some time. So do this exercise by yourself. Next, I have to show that. See, it's a partial order line. So what uh, what I'll do with that? Take a linearly ordered subset of this lambda, so let us gamma be a linear subset. I will show that this has an upper bound. Okay, all elements here are dominated by a member of lambda. That will satisf. That will mean that conditions for John's lemma are satisfied. Okay. After that, we can conclude that there is a maximal element here, and that maximal element is going to give you whatever we want, that namely a well-ordered set on X. So let us see how. We start with a linear order subset. Put B equal to union of all these members inside this lambda gamma. Okay, remember a sets. What are they? All these are AI contained inside AJ or AJ contained inside AI. This is total order is the linear order. Okay, you take the union that is a subset of X. Now, if you take any two elements in A in B, there will be one A one belonging to gamma such that both of them are will be in A one. Why? Because X may be in say A and Y may be inside some A prime, but A is less than or equal to A prime or equal less than or equal to A prime. Means one is contained in the other. Therefore, you can take the bigger one. So there is a A one for which both X Y S are inside A one. Now you define the new relation on B, which is less than or equal to prime. This is new relation I am going to define. How I am going to define? X is less than or equal to prime y. If we don't leave, X is less than or equal to y inside a one because they are members of a one. Now you have to see that this is well defined. Does not depend upon what a one I have chosen. If I have chosen some a two, okay, then. A one is a segment of A two, or A two is a segment of A one, which means this relation will be the same for as far as x and y are concerned. Okay, that's why this is well defined. Automatically, it will be a order. Okay, partial order. Okay, so what we have to say that it is a totally ordered set. B lambda prime is a totally ordered set. Okay, 
actually we want to show that it's a well order total order is obvious just now we have just shown this one so this is a well order then this will be a member of this lambda and then we have to show that this is an upper bound for all the elements inside this gamma it's an upper bound for gamma so quite a bit of work to do huh yeah so we claim that b less than or equal to prime is well ordered what does that mean take any non empty subset c of b show that it has an infimum okay the moment this non empty intersection with one of the members of gamma must be non empty because what is b b is a union of all members of gamma as a subset okay so this is non empty as a subset of a1 less than equal to which is well ordered the c intersection a1 must have a infimum let us say call it as t this t is an infimum of c intersection a1 inside a1 we claim that t is the infimum for c inside b prime which is very few t okay so that's what you have to show once we show that well orderness of b comma less than equal to prime is proved okay so here is the proof take any element x inside c say x must be inside some a2 belonging to gamma right because all elements of c are all members of some b right since gamma is totally ordered this a1 is preceding a2 or a2 is preceding a1 in precedence there is one way namely a1 may be equal to a2 then obviously this t which is minimum of c intersection a1 will be less than or equal to x in the in the larger b in the in the b prime order right because they have these two are equal and x and x and uh, t are both elements of this a1 equal to a2 so we shall assume that a1 is not equal to a2 now there is two different cases either a1 it precedes a2 or a, a a2 precedes a1 suppose a1 precedes a2 okay now there are two cases again because a1 is not equal to a2 a1 may be an open ray open initial segment like this okay where this y comes from a2 all right for some y inside it now if x is less than y under this a2 then by the definition x is inside a1 t is a small is the least among us all these right therefore t is less than or equal to x okay you to begin with you have taken x to be an element of c remember that Okay, so moment is a one, it will be in C intersection a one. So therefore, t will be less than equal to x. But this is the relation in the larger b prime also, b also. So t is less than prime x. Now second case is y is less than equal to x. Okay, this y is less than equal to x. but then t will be less than equal to y okay less than equal to x so it follows that t is less than equal to x which in turn is t is less than equal to prime x okay the second case is instead of open ray you have an closed ray that means i start with a2 all a1 is all a2 such so that a2 is less than or equal to y here 
the proof is exactly same you have to just put less than or equal to here and here you have just put less than that's all so identical proof okay now the second case is the other way around a2 precedes a1 then it follows that c intersection a2 is a smaller subset than c intersection a1 right it may be equal also i don't care and hence t will be less than or equal to this x also because for all these elements t is t is smallest so t is smallest so smaller than this one also but again t is less than or equal to prime x so in all these cases you have shown that t is less than or equal to prime x for all x inside c okay no restriction c intersection even now so this means that b is well ordered now we shall prove that this is an upper bound so far is well ordered it is a member of b that we are member of lambda okay now it's a upper bound for all n members of gamma okay start with any member of gamma then for x and y inside a1 we have x less than to y if and only if x is less than equal to y prime by the definition of this prime less than equal to prime by this this uh, this is the rule we have already therefore one thing is clear namely the order is fine we have to show that this a1 less than equal to 1 precedes b less than that is what we have to show right so this condition is satisfied now suppose a1 is the whole of b that is one case as a set then clearly these two are equal because we have already shown this one so as a possessor also they are equal now otherwise otherwise means what a1 is a proper subset of b that means there must be a twos inside this gamma such that a one is not equal to a two but contained inside a two. If everything is contained inside a one, union will be a one which is b. So that is not that is not the case now. Okay, so a one is contained inside a two but not equal. Therefore, a one less than equal to one, a two less than equal to a two must be related somehow because they are in the total order. Is this uh, total order set gamma since this cannot be a subset of this one so it is this one a1 less than equal to precedes a2 therefore a1 is an initial segment either open or closed doesn't matter is initial segment of a2 therefore it is initial segment in b prime also b also same y will give you the same property All right so we have proved that every a is an initial segment it is uh, it is precedes b okay in either case we have shown that this is an upper bound for lambda this uh, gamma with respect to this uh, relation precedes so far what we have proved is that zorn selma condition for zorn selma satisfied therefore there is a maximal element y comma this one in x what is the meaning of this this means y is a subset of x okay and this la less than or equal to is at well order and if there is another y prime less than or equal to well order subset of x okay then that cannot be bigger than this one that ca y cannot precede that one this is a maximal element or y precede then they must be equal so that is the meaning of maximal element so now we claim that this the underlying set y is the whole of x so that will complete the proof we have formed a um, partial order which is actually well ordered okay so y 
y y should be equal to x that is what we have studied if not we can pick up some element x inside a complement put z equal to y disjoint in an x that means one extra element okay extend the well order on y to z by declaring the only thing that we have to extend is how x is related with other elements so declare y less than x for all y inside y okay this way z becomes a partial order it is automatically well ordered because if a subset is already inside y it is well ordered if it is not it will contain x but but x is largest so there is still the minimal element coming from y part y part will be again give you minimal element finally if you have just singleton x then that is singleton x itself is a minimal element therefore this is a well ordered now what we have got z is a well ordered set but y precedes that one this is a bigger thing now, that's a contradiction the contradiction because we assumed y is smaller than x it is not the full x if y is x there is no problem so that completes the proof of zermelo's zermelo's axiom here we have made it a theorem namely every set can be well ordered as i told you the original proof of zermelo was for 1904 more than 100 years now 120 years huh? is directly from axiom of choice and is certainly more complicated the above proof is simple and short because we have directly used john's lemma and not so obvious fact that axiom of choice is equal to john's lemma if we try to prove john's lemma using axiom of choice that it will be again a horrendous task okay so we have avoided that one next time we will do another important landmark result in set theory principle of transfinite induction thank you